everybody this is harriet kamek the host of down to earth the show in which we talk about the issues that matter and today on our show i have a message that's right i have a message for those of us who are encountering difficulties or who find ourselves sometimes not sure what to do not sure where to go especially in this thanksgiving season as we gather together as family and we are sitting around the table and you look around and you say to yourself, what on earth am I doing here? Am I doing the right thing? We're approaching the end of the year. So it gives us perspective. Yeah. And we're looking back over the year to see, did I do what I was supposed to do? Did I accomplish the goals that I set out for myself for the year? Did I do everything that I could to possibly make this work? You might be looking at your marriage and you're saying to yourself, did I do everything I could to stave off of a, door, a divorce? The children have gone on to college and so you're an empty nester. And you're looking around like, do we still need this house or should we downsize? When we downsize, is our marriage part of what is going to be downsized? Food for thought, something to think about. So this is going to be that message for you. In, within this message, in Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 to 9, you're going to find your instructions on what you should do next. I advise you, I suggest that you pray about it because when this message hits you, you're going to hear exactly what you need. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 tonight. So before I go into the scripture, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. If this is your first time watching us, my name is Harriet Kamak. I'm an author and speaker. I'm also the host of Down to Earth. You can find more information about us on the exodusfoundation.com. You can also go to our pages on Spotify, Apple, Google, everywhere there is the internet, you can find more information about us, right? You can also follow us on all the major social media platforms. So thank you so very much. And uh, go with me in your Bibles. If you don't have the Bible near to you, you have a phone, download the Bible app and go with me to Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. And I want to set the stage for you. Zechariah was one of the 12 minor prophets. So this is a prophet, right? So he's giving specific instructions to the people who have fled and who have come out of exile. So according to some theologians, they say that there were 40,000 people who actually went into the promised land. Not everyone went. They believe that some people having lived in the exile made themselves comfortable. So they adapted, they intermarried, they adapted, they created establishments and so on. So not everyone left. But for those who chose to leave, this is your message. So this is not for everyone, but this is for you. So listen to these words on this week and uh, hear what this message has to say. So Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. And it reads like this. As usual, we're reading from the New King James Version. Listen to this. In verse 6, listen. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Here endeth the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Thanks be to God. Father, in Jesus' name, let me decrease so that you might increase. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts find acceptance in your sight. We pray in this Thanksgiving season, as you come, O oh God, to hover over us, as we give thanks for all that has happened this year, for as we look around the Thanksgiving table and realize that there are some members who are missing. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for those who are missing loved ones, who have lost loved ones this year. We pray that you'll be their comfort and their peace and give them hope to continue. We pray for those, oh God, who are facing other disasters in their home. It could be a new diagnosis. It could be something with the children. It could be a marriage that is splintering in half. Lord God, I'm 
mighty hover over your people. Maybe someone has to make a decision about a business decision in the coming year. Lord God Almighty, hover over us. Give us instructions, oh God. Wrap us around us, oh God, and give us hope every day. We pray right now, Lord, that you dissemble and burst every cyst, every tumor that is operating in our bodies. In the name of Jesus, be the comforter, be the physician, oh God, and be the great physician who comes down to earth and hover over your people. Heal your people this season, Jesus. Hover over your people. Bring strength to us, O God. We praise you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. Imagine that. Imagine you reading that. So you might be looking at yourself and you say, is this geographical? Is this, uh, I'm living in the land of the north. Does this mean that I flee? No. God wants you to understand that you're to follow his instructions. There are times when his instructions are literal, like follow it to the letter. As we saw in the book of Exodus, when he commanded the people to come out of Egypt in the book of Genesis, when he commanded them to come out of Egypt, when he told them to go into the land of Canaan, the promised land. Here is the thing that I have found is that each of us has a promised land. There is a place that God has sent us to. There is a thing, you might call it, that God has given you to do. As we approach the end of the, earth, the, the year, I almost said the end of the earth, as we approach the end of the year, might I suggest that all of us sit down and ask ourselves, what is it that we were supposed to do this year? Have we done it? And if we haven't done it, well, that's what you do. You are fleeing from that which you haven't done. You must go back to it. Listen to what he says. He says, up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon here is what? Is all the things that are wrong. All the things that we shouldn't have done, but we did. All the rebellious things. Here's what rebellion means. So often we hear this word rebellion and we think that, oh, people are just being anti. No, rebellion in this context is the Lord has given you a specific instruction. So if you're dwelling with the daughter of Babylon, it means you don't want to hear what God has to say. You're listening to Satan. And that's all that it means. So he's saying, daughter of Babylon, if you're dwelling with those people who are having a good time, having a merry time, instead of doing what God has called you to do. He says, he sent me after glory for the nations which plunder you. So whoever hurt you hurts God. You are the apple of his eye. You are the tender part of him. That part of you that says, oh God, I'm helpless. Oh God, I don't know what to do. Please help me. We all feel boxed around. You have decisions to make and sometimes it feels like the world is imploding on you. You feel like the world is coming down on you. Have you ever felt like that? Like all of a sudden, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Like it just happens and just it's the end of the year. You're going to the doctor. You're going to get checkups. They're telling you your cholesterol is high, your blood pressure, you're this, you're that. Then your husband, your spouse suddenly starts saying, I don't know what's going to happen in the new year. We might, we, we need to talk words that nobody in a relationship ever wants to hear or in a marriage ever wants to hear. When they, someone says, when your partner and your spouse says, we need to talk, that's it. Then your business is looking like it's going up and down as the fluctuation in inflation happens. The inflation is not just economical here. The inflation is also happening to us emotionally. It's happening to us relationally. Everything that could change is changing. Many of us, even if these are not the concerns that are happening to you, you might be in a place where you're financially comfortable, you're settled in your marriage, but all of us at some point this year have found ourselves wondering what on earth is going on. We have noticed that in the last four or five years, everything that could change has changed. You know what we're also noticing? For the first time, it's irreversible. It can't go back. We're trying to make it go back to what it used to be because that was a comfortable time. As for me, I would love for everything to go back before 2001. I promise you, everything, even I would even take the mid 2000s at this point, to be honest with you. 
because it seems like everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. So what is the scripture? And this is why we need the scripture. This is why we need God, because he comes to assure us at those times when we don't know what to do, what to do. So he says, flee from the land of the north. So this is important to people who are in war zones, people who are in the Sudan, people who are in Yemen, people who are in uh, Ethiopia. Just recently, a Christian minister in the Sudan set himself on fire for the world to see what is going on in his land. It's not just the genocide. It's not just people, the, inter, inter, the, the revolutionaries fighting against the people. It's outside forces that are also going in, influencing the war. He set himself on fire so that the whole world could see what is going on. And what do we do? We pick up our phones and we go to entertain ourselves. Because you know what we know? Deep down inside of us, we know something is wrong. We know deep down that something is wrong. It's just like you are sitting at your kitchen table and you are, we don't balance checkbooks anymore, but we open our laptops and we go into our bank accounts and we look at where we spent our money and what we've spent our money on all year. And we're like, this is not working. You're looking what you thought was your savings account, what you had put away and what you had invested to guide you through and to take you through retirement and you realize it's not helping. How many times did you have to go into your retirement fund to help a grandchild, to help some, to help a relative pay off their mortgage or stop foreclosure? All these things are happening to all of us. And we ask ourselves this question, what are we doing? The Bible says here, flee from the land of the North. Now, I don't know what the land of the north might mean to you specifically, but I know what it means to me. I draw my comfort from the scriptures. And I hear when the Lord speaks to me here in verse 9, where he says, in verse 8, where he says, Whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. That is my way. That is God's way of that's my reassurance. That's God's way of telling me that whoever has brought this thing against me, it's time for me to realize that God is in my boat. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus had a thing where whenever he wanted time away, he would get into the boat and he would just row across the lake. Sometimes he would invite his, his uh, disciples with him. He would just say, come on, get in the boat with me. This is one of those times when God is saying, with all the noise that is going on, we're so distracted today. There are so many competing uh, spaces for our attention. We have technology and technology is good. Technology has been great for us who are alive in this latter part, well, in the late 20th century to now the 21st century. But technology also provides sources of distraction. So instead of listening to our spouses talk, we're on our phones. Instead of listening to our children talk, we're on our phones. And this has been going on for dec a decade now. So we're so distracted. There's so many things competing for our attention. There are more cable channels than our eyes could ever view. There are more streaming channels now than we could ever want. So we are distracted. We're not listening to one another. That conversation that we need to shut everything off and listen, we're not doing it. So on this Thanksgiving weekend, shut the phones off. As you sit at the table, shut the phones down. Turn the phones over and start listening to one another. Listen to the people around you. Listen to what they're saying. And finally, listen to that still small voice within. Learn to dissociate and separate the word of the Lord from all the noise that is around you. All of us have a journey, a unique journey to go on. And I like to say it like this. All of us have to march to the beat of our own drum. There is a drummer who is beating a drum for all of us. You might be married for 30, 40 years. And God bless you both. God bless you that you have walked together. You have climbed mountains together and you have done things together. But you still have a unique footprint that you yourself must carry through. This is for you. 
This is God speaking specifically and specific instructions when he's telling you exactly what to do. This came within the context of the people. It was post-exile. They had to go rebuild a temple. And God was saying, flee from the land of the north and go back to where you have been called. Do you see what I'm saying? That is what the message is. Whatever you are doing, that is not what you are supposed to do. You might have changed it as you went along. Go back to what you have been called to do. We see this a lot. And I, 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 we see this a lot even in business. Yeah. Do you remember some years ago, there was a large computer company and they made computers. That was the name. It starts with H and a P. They made computers and somehow they decided to buy another competitor. You remember it starts with a C. You remember that fiasco in the 2000s? What happened? The company, Hewlett Packard, they suffered a major loss. They went into something that was not their core business. Because they took on somebody else's program that was not their core business. In fact, the CEO ended up being fired by the board and had to leave because it brought the company and restructured the company and absorbed all the funds and it did not become profitable. God is saying to you right here, listen to my voice. I am the Lord. I am in charge of you and your circumstances. Nothing happens to you that I don't know about. You may not agree with it. You might think that God's role is the magician. He's supposed to wave a magic wand and things just erase and disappear. Not necessarily. That's magic. That's not how that works. How God works is that he uses our will. So while he's giving us instructions, he too is mindful that I made these people. And I gave them free will so you can choose to follow what he says or you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. But when you do what you feel you should do and you come to the place where it doesn't work, you have to come back to the still small voice within. And that is what, that is my message to you today. Learn to listen to the still small voice of God. God often wraps his instructions to us. They always don't sound complete. It's never like, go run up to Mount Everest. It's never as simple as that, or just go take I-75 and drive it from Florida all the way to where it ends. No, it's never that simple. It's never that clear. It's often wrapped in a message. It's often couched in words that when it's broken down, you begin to realize that it has an importance. It has some kind of ramification and there is certainly a certification for our lives. I want to tell you that I found that to be true in my story. Years ago, 20 years ago, this November is actually 20 years. I lived in Florida. Everything had fallen apart. Marriage had fallen apart. It, the abuse had gotten to the stage where it was unlivable and it was time for me to flee. I lived in Florida. It was time for me to flee from the land of the north. Florida is in the south, but it's in the southern part of the United States. And it was time for me to flee. So imagine how I felt with two children. I would have to pack up everything that I knew and move to Detroit in a separation because I had no other financial means to help myself. I had to now go live with my mother. Imagine how I felt. There was a song that my mother kept playing. Uh, in those days, we had CDs, yeah? We didn't have uh, MP3s and that kind of thing. So we had CDs, and mom put in a CD in the car that I was driving. I was driving my brother's uh, Ford F-150. God help us all. Yes, imagine that, <laughs> right? And we were driving, and the song that was playing... It says, go across the river. There will be joy across the river. And mom kept playing the song. And every time she would put the CD in or because we're driving from Florida. So, you know, we had to stop and uh, stop and stay in motels and so on. And every time she would come back in the car and I would restart it, it was that song. Go across the river. Finally, we got to Lookout Mountain the top of Lookout Mountain in, I think it's in Tennessee. And I'm standing there and I'm like, okay, so where is this river that I am to go across? 
And I'm standing there and I could not understand. Then I understood. There is a river in Detroit, the Detroit River. Do you know I never knew that? I never knew that. I had to go across, crossing from Florida to Detroit. How many rivers have I crossed? Think about that. If I had listened to the song, all I knew is that in those words were the instructions of God. So I followed it to the letter. Now, what is the backdrop? The backdrop here is that I lived in Florida and was trying to publish my first book, Visions. I got rejected by the publisher. I came to Detroit. Remember the song said, go across the river? I came to Detroit and six months later, that book was published by the same publisher who had denied me the first time. What am I saying? The instructions of God are specific and they are our guide. They're also what delivers us in the instructions, no matter how silly it sounded. What was the instructions of God that I was hearing? Go across the river. Oh my goodness. The Tennessee River, the Missouri River, whatever the river was that I was driving across. Mind you, I'm not so uh, caught up on my geography, but there was a river that I should cross over. You know that saying, that song stayed in my consciousness all the way here? Not only did it stay in my consciousness, but I kept it as a reminder of the instructions of God. That song stayed with me and carried me all the way through. Here comes 2019. Here comes 2019, another crisis, another crisis of faith, another crisis in my life. And there is another song that talks about the river. I don't know what this might be for you. Maybe this is for you, the land of the north. Maybe contained in this right there as soon, that very first verse, verse number six, that very first line, flee from the land. Maybe this is for you. Maybe this is what it is. Maybe your building is, lo- your business is located in another part of town. <laughs> Whatever this is, this is your instructions. It says to listen to God. He says, escape. And if you have people around you who are giving you bad advice, who are rebelling against the edict of God, the plan of God for your life, the plan that God gave you to execute, then that is what you're fleeing from. I know that this is a hard message, especially on this Thanksgiving. We want sweet, holy messages that just make us, bye-bye, go to bed now, go to sleep. There you go, good girl, bad girl. That's not what life is about. We're in a different time now. That's why you're listening to me. We recognize that the message is, God bless all of those who have preached. God bless them for their faith, for giving us faith and encouraging us and giving us hope. We're in a different season now. We need people who understand that the times and the seasons have changed. The messages that we used to get years ago are not resonating now because we're in a different season. We're in a different time. The message is now we're going to have to follow to the letter, the instructions of God. That's what this is. We're going to have to follow what God says. We're going to have to be more mindful of what is going on. We're going to have to start watching how we walk, how we talk, how we deal. We can't afford to ever find ourselves rebelling against the plan of God. If God called you, And in former times, you could get away with a call of God and you could do whatever you wanted and you could still come back. This is not the season for that. In this season, you are going to have to follow the the plan of God. If God tells you to do something, you better do it because the times have changed. When the times changed, there wasn't a big announcement over our heads that says, oh, look, 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 the seasons have changed. No, it didn't come with an announcement. It was very subtle and in its subtlety, was the deception. Because it happened so subtly, most of us are caught unawares. This is why, for instance, you're at work and you think everything is fine. You're just going to work every day and it looks like everything is fine. And then they call you into the manager's office one day and the security are in there and the security has gone to pack out your bags. And all of a sudden, you no longer work there. And you're like, oh my God, do you know how many things I've given up for this job? And it changed and feels like the rug was pulled out right from under you. But if you go back, you will realize there was a still small voice that was telling you, did you put your resume on Indeed.com? <laughs> did you put your resume mm-hmm, on Monster.com? Have you been applying for other jobs? 
worse is the voice that says, did you start the business? I told you to. When you were giving all the ways that it shouldn't work, all the nights that you set up, you should have made your business go a different way. But instead, you went another way. You listened to somebody else. You listened to someone else's instructions. Let me be clear. Sometimes, even when you follow the will of God to its perfection, sometimes, even then, things go wrong. I have found that you still follow the will of God, because you will come out. He will make you ride out, just as he promises here. Whoever touches you, whoever plunders you, he's going to shake his hand against them, and they shall pay for what they have done to you. That's what it says right here. They shall become spoiled for their servants. That's right. So you don't have to worry about the outcome. Obey God. Follow God. And don't worry about the consequences. Leave all the consequences to him. As you sit around Thanksgiving, as you sit there and contemplate the end of the year, we're approaching the end of the year. We're approaching the end of this year, tumultuous as it has been. As we head into next year, we feel and can feel the vibrations that it's probably not going to be a smooth year. It probably is going to shake us up. We're already shaken up, you say, Harriet. Well, we're going to get more shaking up. It's not going to be one of those cruising years. I wish I was the prophet who could come and tell you that. All I can tell you is we're going to have to follow the plan of God. So in the coming days, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, and in the coming year, if God tells us to flee, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get up, pack our stuff, and we're going to go exactly and do exactly what God tells us to do. This is preparation for that journey. And I want to tell us that I feel like it's coming. So in these last few moments, if this is your first time, if you have never heard the gospel before, if you say, what is this person talking about? What is this lady talking about? Get to know Jesus. Romans 10 and 10 tells us about faith, without faith, that we must come to God by faith. And I encourage you, according to 1 John 1 and 9, to seek God. If you've never known Jesus before, then just simply say, Father, I come before you humbly. Help me to know you. Help me to understand what this message from Zechariah chapter 2, verses 6 to 9, is telling me to do. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Be blessed, everybody.